All right, Dirt Cup night number two is in the books, and um, surprise winner uh, for sure. I, I mean, I know who this guy is. If you don't, I'm going to give you some background on him here in just a moment. Uh, but Dominic Gordon got the win on night number two of the Dirt Cup, kind of shocking the sprint car world, a field of 43, 410 sprint cars, the best guys in the West, and a couple of guys from even the Midwest coming out and racing this event, and he gets the win in relatively dominating fashion. So let's go through the lap by lap here and take a look at what happened during Dirt Cup night number two over at the Skagit Speedway in Washington. So on lap one, uh, it's going to be Tanner Carrick and Eric Fisher leading the field to green. And they do so, but it doesn't last very long. As in turn number one, uh, Eric Fisher gets into the wall, gets upside down. He collects DJ Neto. And I'm not sure what happens to Corey Day in this incident, if he even got involved in it. But he has to go to the work area. Uh, and it looks like the crew working on the right rear, or the shock, or, or something went wrong on that car. Had to go to the work area and go to the tail. Then they go back to green. Carrick leads the first lap. Chase Johnson moves into the second position. And then it doesn't last very long again. We have another red flag. Lap three is DJ Neto getting upside down in turn number one. That's the second involvement of yellow for him. And uh, he would not return. The car was pretty tore up. So DJ Neto's night comes to an end. After being pretty high up in the point standings, he started back there in the mid-pack of the race, meaning, you know, with the Skagit Speedway format, that he was looking pretty good in the points. Then on lap six, Johnson and Carrick are side by side for a couple laps. I mean, laps four through six, they were side by side. Johnson on the bottom, Carrick on the top. Great racing, great race track, and uh, really provided for some side by side action, sliders, all the good stuff. Then on lap seven, caution comes out for Colby Thornhill as he stops on the front straightaway. Then we go back green, but only lasts for one lap as Jesse Schlotfeld slows into turn three. Trey Starks kind of caught off guard, jumps the right rear of uh, Schlotfeld's car, does a 720, really never gets upside down, gets close, uh, but a pretty violent incident for the second night in a row for Trey Starks. He was once again up there in the point standing, started mid-pack in the race, and had nowhere to go once again. This time, the car wasn't completely torn up, uh, but still, he uh, got, I mean, it's a pretty big incident, took him out of the race, and Starks has nothing to show for his week at Dirt Cup so far. Also involved in this incident was Devin Borden, as he slid into the side of, um, of uh, Trey Starks and came to a stop as well. Then, for the second night in a row, there was an open red uh, before the first 10 laps of the race. The night before, it was lap 9, lap 8 tonight, open red flag conditions. Then we go back to green. And Dominic Gordon makes his way past Chase Johnson for the second position. On lap 11, Justin Sanders gets by Willie Croft in turn three to move into the top five. Sanders started in the 10th position. So uh, before or just past lap 10, he's already in the top five. Lap 14, Dominic Gordon with a huge dive bomb, a huge slider on Tanner Carrick for the lead. Carrick able to cross him back up and maintain the top spot. Then two laps later, Dominic Gordon rolls some hot bottom off of turn number four and takes the lead away from Tanner Carrick. It is short-lived, though, because on the next lap, it's a roll reversal. As Carrick goes to the bottom, Gordon goes to the top, and Carrick takes the lead off the bottom of the racetrack. And Chase Johnson is also in the mix, uh, basically a three-car battle for the top spot here on lap 17. But then on that same lap, as Carrick takes the top spot, Yellow comes out for Cole Macedo as he slows on the back straightaway. He was in the 13th position at the time and draws the yellow. Then on the restart, as and if you haven't been watching these races, they have backstretch restarts, which has been really fun to watch so far, especially when the racetrack is how it is. Very, very wide. You can roll the middle sometimes. The bottom is good. The top is good. The bottom a little bit, um, a little bit wavy down there on both ends. And it just makes it for exciting moments there on these restarts when they go on the back straightaway. Justin Cox gets past, or, or Justin Cox passes Chase Johnson for the third spot. And then they go into turns one and two. So he, he made the pass in three and four as they came to green on the backstretch, made the pass there. Then they go into turn one and they're three wide. Chase Johnson, Dominic Gordon, and Justin Cox for second. Meanwhile, Tanner Carrick still showing the way. Lap 19, Justin Sanders gets by Chase Johnson. He's up to P4. And then on lap 20, Dominic Gordon back by Tanner Carrick for the P1 position. And after this, he would not look back and he would drive away and uh, not be seen again. Lap number or on lap 20, the running order is Gordon, Carrick, Cox, Sanders, Johnson, the top five, and then uh, Tanner Holmes, Willie Croft, Jesse Schlotfeld, Corey Day, and uh, Colby Copeland round out the top 10. And then right here, I just have the track is badass. The track is so badass. You cannot, 
I mean, for me, this is the perfect type of racetrack, right? I mean, it's got a big cushion right on the wall. The bottom, you really have to slow down. You have to drive the car straight around the bottom to make it work. And it's got that, like I mentioned a moment ago, it's got that little bit of a roughness to it to make it not too easy to run. You got to be precise to hit the bottom. I mean, the track is just absolutely perfect. I don't know who's doing the prep over there, uh, but they need a raise. I mean, it was fantastic. If they can get it like that for uh, tonight's race, uh, it could be bonkers over there. Uh, then on lap number 26, Dominic Gordon gets into traffic, and Corey Day is up into the seventh position after starting in 16th and going to the tail after going into the work area. So Corey Day making quick work of the field. Lap 30, Justin Sanders is up to third, getting by Justin Cox off of turn number four. And on lap 32, Justin, or sorry, uh, Corey Day is up to P4 as he gets by two cars in one corner through one and two, gets by Chase Johnson and Justin Cox. Then on lap 34, Justin Sanders getting by the second place car of Tanner Carrick. He's up to second. And then on lap 35, when they come around to take the checkered, Corey Day makes the pass on Tanner Carrick to get into the third spot. And Dominic Gordon crosses the line with almost a straightaway, I mean, it might have been more than a straightaway lead, and gets his first ever 410 sprint car victory in his rookie year of racing 410s. He wins a big one. I mean, this race, I think it was five or 6,000 to win. It's really not even about the money. It's about the quality of cars, the quality of field, the um, prestige of the Dirt Cup, right? Winning one of these prelim nights, an absolutely monumental win uh, for Dominic Gordon. Got a veteran, a legendary crew chief. Richard Brown is the guy that's you know spinning the spanners on this car, and uh, they get a really, really big win. Awesome to see. I've been watching Dominic Gordon and, and announcing his races and go-karts for a very long time now. Uh, I've known this kid for at least the better part of eight to 10 years at this point, I would think. Uh, I watched him come into the Red Bluff Outlaws, which is, in my opinion, the toughest competition on a weekly basis of any weekly racetrack in the country. He came in there and ran in the top division and got a win in his first ever season out there as a rookie. So I've been watching this guy for a long time. He's ran the Chili Bowl two different times and was in the B main on Saturday, nearly you know getting into the feature over at the Chili Bowl. Uh, he's got wins in the 360 car at Ocean. He's got uh, top fives with King of the West before this race. Got top fives with SCCT. Uh, this kid is something special. He's got the backing behind him. He's got the funding. He's got the cars. He's got the crew chief. He's got everything he needs to be successful. And he showed it here tonight at the Dirt Cup. Uh, from P6 to P1, Dominic Gordon got the win. Justin Sanders, 10th to 2nd. Corey Day, 16th to 3rd. Tanner Carrick led some laps in this one. Finishes up in 4th. Solid run for him. Justin Cox continues his good week, 5-5 five to five for him. Chase Johnson ended up 6th after starting 4th. Zeb Wise might be the guy to beat on Saturday night. Him and Corey Day, I feel like, and Sanders, those guys are the top 3 right now for me uh, that have shown the most speed. And then 4th on that list has got to be Tanner Holmes. But Zeb Wise, 17th to 7th. Tanner Holmes, 14th to 8th. Jesse Schlotfeld with a great ninth place run. And Willie Croft, two top 10s in a row to open up his Dirt Cup. He finishes in the, ten, in the 10th position. Now, after the two nights, after the two prelim nights, we take all the points, put them all together, and that is how we determine how everything goes for tonight's finale. The top four guys in the points after those two nights now they will go to the pole shuffle. Those four drivers, Zeb Wise is P1. Six points behind him is Justin Sanders. 13 behind him is Tanner Holmes. And then 13 behind, or sorry, 24 behind is uh, Jason Solwald, who has been a quiet uh, surprise so far this week. We know that Solwald is a great, great driver, especially at Skagit. You know, he's a guy that's been on the Outlaw Tour before, uh, but he kind of surprised a lot of people, I feel like, this week. Fourth place in the points, he is locked in to uh, the, the pole shuffle for tonight and uh, been really, really solid. Was quick time overall last night, and he was tied for quick time the first night, so getting a lot of points there. Then behind those guys, these four will start on the pole of their heat races tonight, and if they can win the heat race, they will join those other four in that pole shuffle. Corey Day, 25 behind in fifth. Uh, Justin Cox, 35 behind in sixth. Cole Macedo, 50 back in seventh. And somehow, Trey Starks, uh, will be on the pole of a heat race tonight. Uh, I don't know how. He has wrecked both nights in the feature. He must have got good points throughout his heat race and qualifying, and that's what saved him here to be up there on the front row of a heat race. So really looking forward to the Dirt Cup here tonight. $62,000 to win, plus $500 to lead a lap. Uh, what is it? $300 to be in second every lap and $200 to be in third every lap. There is a ton of money up for grabs. 
And I think that it's going to be a great battle between Zeb Wise, uh, Justin Sanders, Corey Day. Now, Day's got his work cut out for him. He still has to win that heat race and throw Tanner Holmes in the mix as well. There's a lot of guys. There's a lot of contenders that can make this thing happen. My money is still on Corey Day. I feel like he has shown the most speed this week. He just keeps making little you know, mistakes or having little issues here and there that have cost him a win over there on a prelim night. So very, very excited. The track, as long as it is like last night, uh, it, it could be the race of the year candidate. They've got everything dialed in over there at Skagit. Can't wait to see how the crowd looks and uh, looking forward to tuning in on Flow Racing. So thank you guys so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed this video and uh, we'll talk to you again here very soon on the channel. We've got some more stuff coming out later today. So talk to you then. Thanks.